All right, so get ready because today we're going to look at something that might flip how you think about stock movements. We're diving deep into a study all about why when a stock trades slowly, it could actually be a sign that, well, it's going to keep going up. Interesting stuff, right? Yeah, we were talking about this thing called trade duration. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's the time between trades of a stock. Mm -hmm. And we're going to connect that to, you know, those classic market things, reversals and momentum. So they've got this January 2025 paper, right? Yep. It looked at intraday trading data from 2019 to 2022 across a bunch of different companies. And what they found was, well, kind of surprising. Yeah, definitely some interesting findings. So just to be clear, when we talk about reversals, what we mean is, when a stock price does a complete U-turn after like a big move. Right, like it was going up and suddenly, bam, it's heading down. And then momentum, of course, is when it just keeps going the same direction. It keeps struggling along, yeah. Now, you'd think, right, that longer times between trades would mean things are stable, like the price is settled. But this research, it found something totally different. It found that these longer trade durations, they can actually come before momentum. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Do you think, ah, oh, things are slow, it's stable? But no, it could actually be a sign that things are about to get even more intense. So walk me through this. What kind of evidence is there to back up this idea? Well, for starters, they looked at those short-term reversals, and they found that longer trade durations meant there was a lower chance of seeing one of those reversals happening. So less likely to see that sudden U-turn. Exactly. And not just for like a day or two. This pattern, it actually held up over longer periods, you know, like one, three, five, even 21 days. So basically, if a stock isn't trading very often, it's less likely to suddenly reverse course. That's what the data shows, yeah. And here's the really interesting part. Those longer trade durations, they were also linked to a higher chance of momentum. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Are you saying that slower trading could actually mean the stock is more likely to keep going up? That's exactly what we're saying. That's that's pretty counterintuitive. It is. It is. And this is where things get a little bit more complex. We need to start thinking about who's actually doing the trading. Who's buying and selling can have a big impact on how the price moves. Think about it like this. You've got your larger companies, right? Mm -hmm. They tend to have more institutional investors, you know, like pension funds and stuff. Right. And those guys, they trade differently than, let's say, an individual investor who might be reacting more to the news or short-term price changes. Right. Makes sense. Those big institutions, they're probably doing a lot more research. They're not letting their emotions drive their decisions as much. Exactly. And that's exactly what they found in the study. The impact of those longer trade durations on momentum, it was strongest for the bigger companies. The ones with more of those institutional investors. Okay, so this isn't just some random thing. There's a real link between who's trading, how they're trading, and whether a stock's going to reverse or keep trending. It's all connected. But how do the researchers measure all of this? I mean, it seems pretty complicated. Yeah, it is. They had to get pretty creative with their methods. One of the things they did was group the stocks together based on trade duration. So they could compare apples to apples, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Make sure that nothing else was skewing the results. Right. And what they found, well, let's just say it was pretty clear. Longer durations meant less chance of a reversal and more momentum. It really does make you wonder if you could use this to try and predict where a stock's headed. That's the big question, isn't it? But I'm guessing there's more to this story than just that, right? Yeah. What other factors did they look at? Well, they also dug into the whole idea of market sentiment. Basically, how optimistic or pessimistic are investors feeling in general? Ah, the mood of the market. Exactly. And this is where things get even more interesting. They found that when investors were feeling good, you know, bullish, those longer trade durations were even more strongly linked to momentum. So if everyone's feeling good about the market and a stock is trading slowly, it's even more likely to keep rising. That seems to be the case, yeah. But what about when sentiment is the opposite? When everyone's feeling, you know, 
a bit more cautious. Bearish, yeah. Well, in those cases, they found that the longer durations were actually associated with a greater chance of reversals. So context really matters. It's not just about the trade duration on its own. Nope. You got to look at the bigger picture. See what the overall mood of the market is. This is making me think about institutional ownership too, right? I mean, those big players, they had a lot of influence on where stock prices go. Yeah, for sure. And the study definitely found a connection there too. Stocks with a lot of institutional ownership, they showed an even stronger link between longer trade durations and that sustained momentum. So it's like those institutional investors are throwing their weight behind the momentum, making mm -hmm. it more likely to continue. It's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? It is. It is. But is it really possible to predict the market just by looking at how often a stock trades? I'm skeptical, but I'm definitely very intrigued. It's good to be skeptical, you know? If predicting the market was easy, we'd all be sipping cocktails on the beach by now. But what this research does, I think, is it gives us some pretty useful clues, some new ways to think about how all these pieces fit together in the market. And it definitely raises some interesting questions, like imagine if we could take these signals, the trade duration stuff, and combine it with other data. Ooh, like what? Well, think about real-time sentiment analysis, for example, you know, or tracking what those big institutions are doing, their buying patterns. Okay, now we're talking. That sounds like it could actually change the game. Yeah. Like imagine having a tool that could give you a heads up, like, hey, this stock's about to take off, or watch out, this one's about to tank. Right. It's a fascinating idea. Of course, there are always challenges. The market, it's a beast, always changing, and no single indicator is perfect. Plus, well, people are unpredictable. True, true. Those black swan events, nobody sees them coming. Yeah. But still, this research, it suggests that maybe there's more predictability in the market than we think. It definitely challenges us to think differently, to look at the information in new ways. Trade duration, sentiment, institutional ownership, it's all part of the bigger picture. The more pieces we can put together, the clearer it gets. It's like we're trying to build a better map of the market, mm -hmm. one that's more detailed, more accurate, one that goes beyond just the basic charts and technical indicators. Exactly. And that's what makes this research so exciting. It opens up all these new paths to explore, new ways to think about trading strategies. But let's not get carried away. This study, it focused on historical data. Right. Applying that to real-time trading, that's a whole other ball game. That's what I was thinking. Huge potential, yeah, but also a ton of complexity. I mean, how would you even go about collecting and analyzing all that data in real time? It seems like a massive task. Well, that's where technology comes in. We've got these amazing algorithms now crunching huge amounts of data in milliseconds. And with AI, machine learning, all that stuff getting better all the time, we're getting closer to being able to spot those patterns and make predictions based on them. So it's not totally crazy to think that we could build tools that take all these factors into account. You know, the trade duration, sentiment, who's buying and selling all of it, and then use that to make better decisions. It's definitely within the realm of possibility. I think that's where a lot of the innovation is gonna be in the next few years. This is making me think about all the different kinds of traders out there. You've got those high frequency traders, the ones who are making decisions based on algorithms, executing trades in fractions of a second. Right. They're all about those tiny price differences, the ones that only exist for a blink of an eye. And then you have the longer term investors, those institutions we talked about. They're thinking bigger, looking at the fundamentals, the long term trends. And this study suggests that those two approaches, they can have really different effects on how the market behaves. Those high-frequency trades, they might add to the liquidity, but they can also create a lot of noise, a lot of ups and downs that don't really mean anything. And those slower, more deliberate trades from the institutions, they could actually be a sign of real strength, real momentum. It's a fascinating contrast. It makes you wonder about how efficient the market really is. Is all that super fast trading actually helpful in the long run? That's a big question. Definitely a topic worth exploring. But for now, I think the main takeaway for our listeners is this. Trade duration, it's not just some technical detail. It can actually give you a glimpse into how the market's working, who's pulling the strings. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's another tool in the toolbox for anyone who's trying to make sense of the market, you know? And it seems like it could be a particularly useful tool these days, with information spreading so fast and investor sentiment changing all the time. Oh, yeah. Being able to separate the signal from the noise, that's more important than ever. So what would you say to someone who's listening to all this and thinking, OK, this is all interesting, but how do I actually use this in my own investing? 
Well, first things first, don't just rely on trade duration alone. It's a piece of the puzzle, not the whole picture. You still gotta do your homework, look at the company, the industry, the overall market conditions. Right, it's not a magic formula. Right. But what this research does, I think, is it gives us a new way to look at things. It tells us to look past those short-term price swings and try to understand what's really driving those movements. And it seems like one of those driving forces is that balance between those short-term reactive traders and those long-term, more thoughtful investors. Absolutely. And this study suggests that those long-term investors, especially the big institutions, they can have a big impact on whether a stock is going to turn around or keep going in the same direction. This makes me wonder if there are any tools out there, platforms or something, that already use trade duration in their analysis. There are definitely some platforms that track what the big institutions are doing, they're buying and selling, that can give you some clues about the long-term trends. Right. And there are sentiment indicators, too to get a sense of the overall mood of the market. Exactly. But I think there's a lot of room to build even more sophisticated tools, tools that combine all of these factors into one comprehensive view. Tools that could help us cut through the noise and find those real opportunities. That's the goal, right? And with all the technology we have, I think we're getting closer all the time. This has been a really interesting conversation. Really got me thinking. It's definitely a topic that deserves more attention I encourage all our listeners to do some digging of their own, see how they can incorporate these ideas into their own strategies. Great advice. Now, before we wrap up, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about the potential downsides of all that high-frequency trading. Yeah, the speed demons. Exactly. You said that while it can add liquidity, it can also make those short-term price swings even worse, making it harder to tell what's real and what's just random noise. It's like they're pumping the market full of caffeine. Making it jittery and unpredictable. Exactly. It makes you wonder if all that speed and complexity is really doing anyone any good in the long run. That's a debate that's been going on for a while now, and it's not going away anytime soon. But I think the key takeaway here is this. Being aware of how high-frequency trading impacts the market, that's important for anyone who's investing. Absolutely. It's another layer of complexity to consider. Well said. Now, before we go, I want to leave our listeners with one last thought. This study, it looked at the U.S. stock market. But what if we applied these same ideas to other markets around the world? What about emerging markets, for example? Now there's a question. That's something researchers are starting to look at. There's so much potential to apply these concepts to different markets, different types of assets, different time frames. It feels like we've only scratched the surface. We've just opened the door. There's a whole universe of possibilities out there. And that's what makes this field so exciting. There's always more to discover, more to analyze, more to learn. Yeah, it really does feel like we've opened up a whole new way of looking at the market. It's a whole different perspective, right? We're not just looking at price and volume anymore. We're thinking about the rhythm of the market. And what this research tells us is that with them, well, it can give us some pretty big clues about what's really going on behind the scenes. So to all our listeners out there, keep exploring, keep asking questions. Don't be afraid to challenge those assumptions. Because in the world of investing, just like in life, the more you learn, the more you realize how much you still don't know. That's the truth. Well, we've reached the end of our deep dive into the world of trade duration, folks. Hope you enjoyed the ride. So until next time, happy investing, everyone. And keep those brains buzzing. Mm -hmm.